So I've been lucky enough to have my first £100,000 invested earlier on this year and I've been hearing a lot about how the first £100,000 is the hardest to get to and how everything after the first £100,000 just begins to explode and you can reach millionaire status not too far ahead of time after that. So in this video I'm going to go through exactly how that works and why you should focus on your first £100,000 instead of your first million. So now if we think of the stock market as a place to grow our wealth in the long term we can often see that over long periods of time the stock market does on average give around 7% per year. Bear in mind that this number is never guaranteed and past performance can never really predict future performance. So if you saved £10,000 per year with that magical return of 7% annually, it would take you around 7 years and 10 months to reach your first £100,000. When you start off saving and investing, £10,000 per year can often feel unachievable and as a result you aren't really motivated to make these payments year on and year out. The well-known investor Charlie Munger who you may have heard of a thousand times by now, he famously said that the first $100,000 is the hardest to ever achieve and after that everything just becomes a lot easier. So I filmed that entire video literally hours before the news broke out. So unfortunately Charlie Munger at the age of 99 has passed away and I guess this video from this point on is going to be a tribute to him. I don't really know him but millions of investors gained useful insight about the world of investing from Charlie Munger. So early on in your investing journey your earning potential is also at your lowest. The amount you have left remaining at the end of your paycheck is always really small and as such you can't really save let alone invest a lot of money. With a smaller portfolio the percentage percentage that you gain per year which is the interest is also smaller as an overall. 7% of £10,000 which sounds like a lot of money is still only £700. Now £700 might sound like a nice amount to get but this isn't really going to be boosting your net worth the way that you want it year in and year out. If you continue to invest £10,000 after reaching your first £100,000 then it would only take you 5 years and 1 month to reach your next £100,000 and have a total pot size of £200,000. That is a reduction of over two years from your first £100,000 to your second £100,000. This is also the sign that the legendary compound interest is now working for you. So once you reach that first £100,000 or even dollars, even if you slow down your deposits, the compound interest is going to be working for you and not against you. Even if you slow down on your depositing, compound interest is going to be working in your favour. For example, the magical 7% of £100,000 is now £7,000 thousand pounds a year that is being added on top of your net worth making the next 100k not too far behind. Even if you stop depositing for example and you're still getting 7% that's 7,000 pound a year that you're getting essentially for free. The power of compound interest really starts to get crazy after your third 100,000 pounds. The next 100k from there only takes around three years and nine months. 7% of 300,000 pounds is 21,000 pounds. That's like a whole salary being added to your portfolio each year for doing absolutely nothing. To get from £400,000 to £500,000 then only just takes two years and six months. As you can tell by now each subsequent 100k takes a shorter and shorter amount of time making the first £100,000 the most important. But let's be honest here for the vast majority of people watching the first £100,000 still seems very out of reach. Because compound interest isn't really working for you under values of less than £100,000, making your first £100,000 really does mean pretty much the same as saving your first £100,000. Therefore you do have to adopt a significant amount of life changes that will help you build that first £100,000 as soon as possible. I could go on and on about how you can cut your costs down to save £5 here and there but realistically the only way to save more money is by not buying things that you don't absolutely need and increasing the amount of income that you receive. Our biggest expense is usually accommodation. If you can save money here that is what you want to do first. Living with parents if that's an option can be a great way of keeping most of your paycheck and ensuring that you can add a healthy amount to your portfolio every single month. Having a side job or a side hustle such as a weekend job or learning a skill like photography for example could bring in the money that you actually need for essentials. Through this extra help you can put the money aside that you're earning from your main job monthly into your portfolio growing it slowly by slowly to get that first £100,000. So Charlie Munger said that you should do whatever you can to save that first 100k even if that means living off coupons and generally living well below your means. If you are really serious about delaying your gratification 
gratification to ensure that you have an easier life in the future, then you would really be looking at ways that you can reduce your expenditure whilst also trying to increase that income. Personally, I don't believe in cutting back on everything, especially when you're young. At the end of the day, nobody knows how long they're going to live and nobody gets back any time in their 20s. In your 20s, usually you are the healthiest and those are the years that you want to enjoy your life while you can at its fullest. During my 20s, I invested heavily into gaining new skill sets. I studied more than most people and ended up with a PhD at the age of 28. I was lucky enough to find a job that pays higher than most, but most importantly, this job afforded me time freedom. As an adult student for many many years I didn't have much money at all so staying with my parents was really the only option. Even then I still wasn't able to save up much mind you. I spent most of my extra money on eating out and going out. During the middle of my PhD however I decided to actually move out and I spent a lot of unnecessary money on that. I rented in central London the most expensive zone in London. While that was a fun experience I learnt a lot about investing during that year. That following year I moved back in with my parents and saved the majority of my wages. Whilst I had some savings to start with, I went overboard to try and catch up to all those lost years. Towards the end of my PhD, I worked several jobs and many, many hours and was able to save around 20 to 30,000 pounds per year. I got lucky with some investments and just a few months ago I was able to reach a total invested amount of £100,000. This all happened at the age of 29 and I felt really really behind in life. That's the thing about comparison. People who left university earlier than myself were already earning so much more than me but they spent all their money on depreciating assets such as cars so the comparison really isn't there. What I'm trying to say is that everyone's journey is completely different. Each individual is dealt with completely unique cards. A hundred thousand pounds or dollars is a lot of money and we shouldn't feel bad about not having that. But if your goal in life is financial independence, depending on how strong a goal that is, you will have to really prioritize that in order to try to reach your first £100,000. After your first £100,000 you can kind of ease your foot off the gas and enjoy the sweet rewards of compound interest. If you would like to start your investing journey check the links in the description down below and I have the affiliate links to my most recommended stockbrokers that I personally use. If you sign up you will receive a free reward but those rewards are always subject to change. So make sure to check out some of my other videos and I will see you in the next video.